Hey everyone, welcome back to the Poplar Report. We got a situation that has been jammed into the omnibus bill. So uh, uh, remember the omnibus bill that uh, that the Republicans uh, sort of passed, but with uh, a lot of Democrat help. Um, they just decided to go on a spending binge, and that uh, that has definitely uh, changed some things because there was a bunch of stuff kind of weaseled in there deeply. And one of the things is that all cattle need to be tracked with RFID chips. And this is a big deal um, with anyone paying attention to beef and beef prices and uh, small cattle ranchers are going to be impacted pretty heavily because of this. So there's a lot of concern out there. We're going to be talking about uh, how this is going to impact the beef industry and how it will impact the beef supply inside the United States. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar and I'm an accountant by trade and I'm abroad uh, in my uh, room in Taiwan. I'm in Taipei right now and uh, I will be heading to India shortly. Uh, some of you are like, I thought you were going to India. Yeah, um, I'll be in India shortly. Um, but I'm just trying to catch up on videos here uh, because I won't have as much time in India because I'll be focusing in on doing uh, trainings for pastors and we'll be out in the countryside and stuff like that. So uh, that's when videos may get a little sparse for me. But I really want to do the research and get some really good stuff here for you. Um, I've shot a lot of videos already and I have some videos to shoot still on what's going on here in Taiwan. Um, all right, so jammed into the omnibus bill. Uh, is this uh, chips for, and not potato chips, right, but RFID chips for all cattle and all buffalo inside the United States, uh, or bison, I think it is. Um, so anyway, uh, all that's to say, uh, right now, basically all cattle have the, uh, the, the visual, you know, where you can read the number on the cattle's ear, uh, that's already on there, but what needs to happen now is they need to have RFID chips uh, implanted as well, um, or, or on the tags need to actually have the uh, chips so that you can, um, they can walk past a sensor and the sensor can pick up the chips and so you don't need to actually have a person looking at them. Um, so that's, that's what's being required here. Now, at first that may sound like, well, who really cares, right? But the, the issue here is that it's harder for uh, smaller ranchers, uh, small farmers uh, to comply with, with some of these uh, regulations. And really, these regulations are made for big cattle herders. I mean, like, why, if you are a small farmer, right, and you want to just raise, um, raise a head of beef and you want to slaughter it, and you want to eat it yourself or maybe just sell it to some of your neighbors. And uh, you want to do that and you don't want to be bothered by the federal government at all. You don't want to have to RFID chip. You don't want to have to do this or whatever. You, you, know, you know its name, right? <laughs> you don't need all of this stuff. You know um, what their name is. You know what they like to eat, you know, uh, all the things that are going on with it. You have this intimate relationship with the animal. Um, and yet the federal government comes in and says, ah, it needs to have an RFID chip in it. Um, now, the technical uh, trigger for this is anytime it crosses a state line. So um, theoretically, you can still not, you know, if you don't cross a state line with them, uh, you don't need to do this. But if you ever want to sell them, um, even if you don't take them across the state line, you may have to chip them before you can sell them. And there's also the question of, uh, you know, when were they chipped? You know, were they started to be tracked a while ago or were they just starting to be tracked just recently? Because if it's just recently, you may not be compliant there as well. So you may have to know, like, maybe I might want to sell them at some point and so I may have to go back and chip them, you know, early just in case I decide to sell them. So there's, there's all these kind of questions and this is... This is it. It's just one layer upon another layer of bureaucracy on everything. Um, you know, like I, as I describe it, you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's not too unreasonable. Like that's, I can kind of see that and it doesn't sound too onerous. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a way to kind of make this work and whatever. But the problem is, is this is just one layer of like a hundred layers. 
and they just keep adding more layers. And you're constantly changing, constantly having new, new things you have to think about. Every single regulation you have to follow with your, uh, with your veterinarian, um, the different chemicals that you can and you cannot put into their uh, bodies, um, tracking all of that, things you can and cannot feed them. Um, and when you trigger different rules and regulations, it requires different reporting, um, just one thing after the next after the next. And all of this is centralized too. So this is the RFID chipping is not like, well, I'll go buy an RFID chip and I'm going to go put it on my cow. No, you have to buy their chip. It has to be registered, and that's the other thing, it has to be registered in their system. You can't just make up an ID chip and, you know, I'm going to label my cow 671553 because that sounds like a cool number to me. I just made that up. Of course, there's no reason why that's an interesting number. Um, you have to go and say, I'd like to apply for a chip for my cow. They're going to say, well, how old are they? Where were they born? Um, what breed are they? You know, you know how government forms work, right? And then it's going to ask you uh, for your grandparents, uh, your grandmother's maiden name, um, because of course it's going to ask something random and weird like that. And you're going to have to give all that information over in order to get a chip, get it registered. Are they going to have to come out and inspect the animal themselves? Are you going to have to bring the animal to them to inspect? Are they going to have to install the chip themselves? Or are they going to trust you with that? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Um, with a bureaucracy, it, it could be as complicated as, uh, as you can imagine, and it could be as um, non-complicated as, uh, you know, if, a, if the right bureaucrat gets a hold of it. Uh, who knows? It might actually not be too bad. But you know how it goes on the other end of the spectrum. If the wrong bureaucrats get a hold of it, if the wrong committee gets a hold of it, it just becomes this nightmare for everybody. So we have a centralized system. Uh, right now we have visible tags. Uh, now we are re going to be required to have radio frequency tags and uh, this gets triggered by any interstate movement. So how is this going to impact ranchers? Uh, right now uh, concern is that it's going to impact small ranchers uh, who don't want to comply with this and then it's going to come back and bite them when they try to sell their cattle later. That's the concern is that people won't move on it and then the big ranchers, the big uh, beef industry will punish them because of it. All right, um, if you guys are aware of what's going on here, we're at 73-year low uh, for our cattle herd in the United States. We, we need all the beef we can get uh, because we're moving into beef shortage and beef crisis, and so it's going to get really ugly in the coming days ahead. I really keep strongly suggesting you get stocked up on beef, and whether that means you buying beef and packing it in your freezer, do that. If you get good deals on that, do that. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, if you don't have the freezer space available, um, you can can beef yourself. You can stick beef. Um, you can you can uh, make your own beef jerky, right? You can use a dehydrator for that. If you have a freeze dryer, I mean, you know what to do with that then. Um, but uh, most of us don't have freeze dryers, right? Uh, but then in addition to that, uh, if you freeze drying is the best way to long term storage, right? Um, so you can buy canned goods um, like like uh, Keystone Meats um, has uh, canned beef, which is good. Um, or you can buy freeze-dried beef if you really want to stock up long term. And uh, we're partnering up with uh, with Prepper Beef. They do a fantastic job because it's not uh, it's not your bottom rung beef crumbles like a lot of times you buy beef and it's just a little crumbly stuff. Um, Prepper Beef actually has some sales going on right now. It's 15% off, and then if you actually use the subscribe function there, you actually get another 10% off, which is really, really good. Um, and you can cancel the subscription. You can get your one order and then cancel your subscription after that, and you're still getting 25% off the price on that. Uh, now, I'm not saying it's cheap. Uh, it's not. Uh, Freeze-dried beef is not cheap anywhere you go. Um, and if you get uh, beef crumbles from you know, Mountain House or whatever like that, uh, that's uh, that, that is a little bit 
less expensive, um, but uh, it's not good quality. I've, I've tried that stuff uh, as well as the other uh, brands. Not the greatest quality, but Prepper Beef is really good quality and it's American raised beet meat uh, from ranchers here. They actually have partnerships directly with the ranchers to make sure they're not injecting anything nasty into the animals um, like uh, you know, antibiotics and all that kind of stuff like that. So uh, you can check out their website and check out their sales and see if that might be a good fit for you uh, to get stocked up. But one way or another, you need to get stocked up for the, for the beef crisis that's coming. Um, do what you can out there. Every time you go to the store, grab a little bit extra. If you're grabbing Vienna sausages, that's not beef, but, you know, meat in general. The beef crisis is going to impact all other meats as well. Pork uh, first, and then also probably chicken as well. So let us know down in the comment section down below what you're doing to get prepared for that. Are you adding another freezer? Are you canning your own meat? Are you purchasing canned goods? Are you stocking up on freeze-dried meats and stuff like that? Uh, let us know down in the comments down below. All right, friends, thanks so much for joining us. If you want to check out another video from this channel, there's one right up here. If you want to check out uh, Prepper uh, Beef, uh, you can click on that link right there, um, and that'll take you over to the website, and you can go see their sales and stuff like that. I also have it down in the pinned comment. Thanks so much for joining us. Steve Poplar of The Poplar Report, out.